having a beautiful Sunday, starting to get a little hot here. So I was sitting in the sun and I had to draw the drapes and put the fan on. And yeah, so um, and it's late in the day. So I wanted to really get on here and answer a few more questions, answer some comments. And first, I want to welcome all of the newcomers coming on board. I am so grateful to have you. We focus primarily on creating and I mean creating, we have got a super creative base of artists following this channel. And um, so I am so grateful to have you, but we focus on creating with recycled um, materials, fabrics, and supplies. And that's a way to give our earth a hug. And it does make a difference all in all. And sometimes I have videos on, I just did one recently on statistics. And so we try to, you know, take a look at that. And we try to take a look at the slow fashion industry and um, anything that has to do with our earthly realm. <laughs> and I am so grateful for everyone coming back. And as I said, the, um, this, all of you artisans are so amazing. Like, so before we, we get even into the uh, thrift shop uh, fabric, um, I just want to um, say that the comments that I'm getting on the Kwandi piece and how some of you are um, working with it is just puts joy in my heart because it's exactly what I'm here for is to, you know, inspire a little bit more of your creativity, encourage you to kind of, you know, get back to your artwork and like that. So, um, so I got to tell you, I got this, all this fabric Saturday and it was $2 and I want to see what it is. So I figured I'd wait and do this with you. So this is the, the little bunch that I got and I'm going to get my tape measure. And look at the designs, though. I mean, is that I some of you, if some of you saw my video over on my new channel, um, Mela's Wacky Wellness. You see, my dress had some flowers on it a little like that. But look at this. Is that just gorgeous? So I got a good amount here. OK, see how it's cut. See how it's cut. That's why it was only a couple of dollars because they know you're a little bit limited, but still there's plenty there. I mean, let's see how much that is um, right there. And that's doubled up. So that's 20. That's 20 right there. So um, just like what this could be actually sewn. Oh, it's it's not even. Um, well, let's see here. Yeah, it is two pieces. Oh, there you go. You just straighten straighten out the uh, edges a little bit, and you've got uh, another table runner to work with right there. That's like 20 by 30 something. That's gorgeous. So, yeah, it has to be ironed and all of that. So, but that's lovely. So, this is probably close to the same, but look at the design here. And now... I do believe this is probably just feeling it is a cotton blend. I'm going to guess 60% cotton and 40% polyester. Let's see if they have, uh, no, they don't have anything on it, but that's what it feels like. But it's a lovely and it's totally something that we can use. So to get to the Kawandi beautiful inspired table runner i am done stitching now i said to you the last time i showed you this right it was last night and i said i have a couple of hours left yeah it was more like three and a half easily no yeah three and a half hours and and i could actually stitch more but my a reasonable side of the brain says this is done so what we're going to do is, uh, so a couple of things. Uh, so there were questions on the size of the table runner. 
And um, now I did. Now there is a video part one where I put the link. If you want the link, let me know. I'll I'll find it for you and put it and send it to you. Uh, but I sent the link to um, the one who was asking the question, how big were these pieces? So I want to show you again in case some of you did not see that video. Now, these were scrap pieces, and I just want to take the information off of here before I show it because the information is kind of like a little business card. So I don't want to divulge anything I'm not supposed to, even though it was in the thrift shop like that, but still. Um, okay, now these both have eyelets, and this is what I mean by eyelets right there. But this is, this is what these pieces look like. So, and they're both, they're both like the exact same size, right? So, and someone was asking, yeah, and I want to say 20, but let's measure, um, measure them because they're the same size. So, yeah, this is 17 and a half by about 18. Now, I think we did have a few that were maybe just a little bigger. This one has an eyelet too. But this one looks about the same size. I'll take this part off. So what I did um, is exactly what, what the question was. Did you sew them together? And yes, that's what I did. I sewed them together. Now, if you look at the back here, you can see before we um, put the backing on, you can see I stitched. This is one overlapping the other, and I just simply stitched it with, I did with the sewing machine, and I did another little stitch there, and that's all I did, and um, it just gave it uh, enough length because they're both square, 17 by 17 and a half or so, so it just gives it enough, and this piece comes out about 33. Now, let's measure it because when you're stitching and you're stitching a lot by the way this is called in Sa in the sashiko world it's called over stitching <laughs> you can you can do as many stitches as you want or as many or as little as you want or you can mix it you can do your visible stitching and then your machine stitching so let's see the length of this is now 32. Now, when we did this, but we did overlap it, it was about 33 and a half. So we overlapped it about a half an inch. And then with all the stitching, I could see it actually physically, uh, visibly kind of shrinking a little like over here. So that is what happens. So once you're done with all of your stitching, um, oh, the other thing before we go there is uh, there was another question on this. Oh, I know it was a comment and it was lovely. So what one of the artists did is she said, um, you know, she acknowledged, as you know, when we lay out these pieces, they're kind of all different sizes. And that is uh, inherent to the Kwandi tradition, right? Ones Because they're they're not worried about size at all. They're just uh, picking, this one might be shorter or smaller. This one's longer. This one's more has more width. It doesn't matter. What matters is they're going around row by row. So one of the artists, Artisan, said um, she followed the method, which I'm interpreting of going around, and but she made her pieces, her fabric pieces, more balanced. So I interpret that to maybe closer to the same sizes, maybe, because these are inherently not uh, balanced. Everything is like that, up and down, back and forth. The only thing that's consistent is you're going around in your rows towards the center. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you. And I do say this every time I do a video. 
when you are uh, reaching the center uh, with stitching of your kawandi, it's normal. It is normal that it's puckering a little. If you're, if not, when you're going along, you see me, you know, kind of flattening them out, making them nice. And I'm going to do that because I want them to be nice and neat. But the puckering is very normal. And actually, for the traditional, um, for the, the city women of Asia, if they, they're making authentic, the authentic quilts. So uh, the, the puckering will be a little bit more substantial, right? Because they're putting batting. They're doing it, making it the traditional way. So, but you will get a little of the puckering as you go towards the center with your stitching. Now, uh, the reason I wanted to mention the comment is um, that what the artist is doing is she is taking the method and she's kind of blending it with her own technique and this is exactly like what i want so much to convey to everyone is make it your own you know and don't be afraid yeah and she says you know i'm thinking out of the box and that is so wonderful you know because we're we're kind of our mindsets are a little bit like Okay, I got to look at the sewing book. Now, I'm not saying sewing books are bad. Don't. There are basic methods to sewing that's really super important. But what I'm saying is that you can create, like if you're looking at a piece, and this happens a lot with artists, and they don't go with it because they think, oh, I can't do it that way. But, you know, you get an idea for a design or how you want to do it, Go for it because that's what art, art is, right? It's totally creative. So um, with that, yes, there's uh, many. Uh, that's what I was going to say. <clears throat> Stitching. Now, when I do a Boro piece, um, the stitching could be horizontal, vertical, or both. Or it could be freestyle, or it could be French knots embroidery, uh, blanket stitches, crosses, X's, uh, stars. I could do a whip stitching. I could do whatever I want. You can do the same with this if you wanted to, because I was thinking about this as I was stitching. I'm like, oh, wow, I think I could cover more territory. Now, I'm not saying I don't enjoy the process because I do. However, if I was doing X's, I would I would cover more territory. So I'm just saying X's all the way around, staying with the frame idea. So see, I'm jumping out of the the traditional or the the inspired and kind of going a little bit. More. But you can play around with the stitches, is what I'm saying. <laughs> so I was thinking about that here now another question i know is probably going to come up is carmella i did my stitches and it's still not adhering unless i put a whole nother row in well this is your piece right and if you feel there's a couple little spots here with your fabric that need a stitch a horizontal stitch or it's going down a vertical stitch put the stitch in now does it mean you have to do a whole nother row if you if you've got all your uh rounds in significantly you probably can't fit another row you know unless you're going on top of other stitches or maybe you don't want to put another row so it's okay to do a couple of stitches um you know, if you are learning, let's say, the authentic and traditional way to do this from the city women, then you probably don't want to mess around with stitches. But if you're blending and you're you're using you're doing a design that is primarily uh, inspired by Kwandi and, you know, you're trying to get this design out, but you see it needs a little spiffied up here, a little spiffied up there. 
it's okay. Spiffy it up because <laughs> it's better to spiffy it up now before you put the backing on. So, okay, in the next clip now, we are going to go through the fabrics. And I forgot I had a whole bin of um, fabrics. So we're going to go through them. So we're not going through one or two. We'll go through about four. See you in the next. Okay, so here we are. We have all the fabrics. Now, this is how I test it out. I'm going to put the camera down on the piece. And what I just do before I go through any long process of cutting or any of that, I don't want to waste my fabric. And I get a very good idea like this. I just place it down like that and I can see all my colors. And then I'm just going to fold this over. I like that. I think that's pretty. I think it's joyful. I think it's bright. Completely different design from anything I have on my runner. So I'm going to put this to the side for the moment. Now, this fabric you've probably seen a number of times as I've had this quite some time because it was a lot, it was like a big roll of fabric and Whoops, I gotta turn it the other way. And um I just it it just doesn't go away. I just have so much of it. So let's see, it usually does look very nice. Now, the only thing about this fabric is it's very silky and it's difficult for me to fold and work with. I'm not crazy about it. Let's put it that way. Unless it looks super nice, I usually probably skip it. I kind of like that though. I mean, that's pretty, as you know, we used a lot of blue. We went through some blue stuff in here. I kept selecting blue. That's lovely. Okay, let's look at the next one. So I'm kind of liking that a lot. So this is, look, all of this. This was gifted to me. This is something I want to use for yo-yos. I have plenty of it plenty so we have uh some fabric in here the um little blue over here of flowers that this does nothing for this in my opinion you let me know what you think i don't think it does anything for it nothing pops it doesn't pop it's got to pop it's got to pop and I'm not sure where we're going with this because this next one, there's a lot here too. This is more of a, it's a, a darker, more of a fall, winter vibe going on. But let's see, sometimes the contrasting is surprisingly uh, beautiful. Sometimes you don't realize just like how it's going to affect your piece. So let's see. I like that. I like that very much, surprisingly so. So, okay, we'll think about that one. It could be that one. I keep that on my chair. Now this, this one is very pretty, and I have used this many times for backings, many times. I cannot believe I still have this much. So um, let's see here. This would be a good one to use just because I have so much of it. But we have a lot of table runners to do. So if it doesn't... um work for this one that's okay oh that's really nice i do think this is the one so you know sometimes it's like that now that pops 
see. Um, that really, really pops. I'm going to pin that and hold it up so you can see how it pops. Now, before I put the backing on, I'm going to um, just look at the back of this piece again. And I went through to make sure it was all knotted, you know, tied. Now, with the tying, uh, one thing also I want to draw caution to, when you tie your threads, you might be tempted to kind of tie threads that are right next to each other. I guess if they're really close, it's okay, like a stitch or so. But if they're about a couple of inches apart and they're kind of in like you just kind of want to. The reason I draw caution to it is they're cotton. And if the piece is somebody hand washes it or maybe and it pull, it uh, shrinks, it shrinks, let's say, or just a little even uh, because they're tied together, it might make the front part of the piece kind of buckle a little so I just wanted to throw that out there that's why I leave my pieces um, I leave the backs pretty loose I leave some uh, room there so they don't end up pulling the um, look at that that's a lovely we're, we're going to go with that one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it about two inches an inch and a half probably an inch and a half all the way around and then I'm going to fold it two times and I'll show you how we'll do the cutting now everyone so I just did the bottom hem first I did the bottom and next we're going to do the top now the top I do the bottom and the top and then the sides or do both the sides and then the bottom and the top. If, if you're making a metered corner and you know how to do that and you want to do that, that's something um, totally, I mean, there's like you could do this any way you want. So um, I'm going to just show for those who don't know how to do the uh, back to front hem. So what I did was I just went, you know, I cut a piece and made it about an inch and a half larger all the way around around the table runner and I laid the t table runner onto it make it nice and flat and then um, all I do is fold the fabric from the back to the front top part of the piece and then I just pin it in place and we just go all the way around like that and I'm only folding it in twos in a half. And you could you can fold it uh, two and a half times, three times, one time, whatever you want uh, to make your hem the way you want it. Because some people, you know, you, you maybe you want it thicker. Um, and so folding it a few times or several times would give you that. So. We're going to go straight across. Now, we also hand stitch this in place. Now, you can machine stitch it if you want to. Now, I, I thought that that's what I was going to do, but um, I'm not. What I'm going to do is hand stitch it. So, and I'll do that with you. And you'll see what it looks like completed. Well, that's a bent pin. I have a lot of bent pins. Okay, so now the top and bottom are done. So that's the top and bottom. And so now I'm just going to turn it around. Oh, so this is falling off the table. So I got to kind of fold it like that. So, um, this is kind of what they call like a box, a boxy type of, uh, I have to trim this here because this is too long. You can see it's coming unfolded. Oh, there it is. I guess that's okay. Nope, it wants to. Well, let's see if we can get that to stay where it's supposed to. Okay, so we're going to 
uh, do the same thing. And this makes what I call, and I think it is called, a little box effect, uh, boxy corner, and then just pin it in place. In your, I, I only folded this two times. Now, yes, it goes over your, um, fabrics. Will it cover some of your designs? So it will. Yes, it will. And, um, but that's okay. That's part of the aesthetic. And it's not going to cover so much that you can't get, um, that they, you know, that the design is not seen because these patches, right, are about five. The smaller ones are like five by three or something. So, okay, that's that side done. Now we're going to turn this around and we're going to do the very same thing. And I'm just going to fold it in half. Coming up to the edge of the um, table runner piece, the piece itself. And that's it. I'm going to put this back up and I'm going to hold it up so you can see. That's very pretty. And then, of course, now, and we'll have to iron this certainly, but the back is lovely. So, um, now to sew it. You can pick any kind of thread you want. Now, I use this lacy crochet thread. And you can pick, um, I thought I had other colors there. Well, behind me, <laughs> you see all the colors. So you can pick any color you want, really. But I'm going to go, I'm going to start with white and um, go around. And I'm going to sew it. I just like, um, I'm going to put this down to show you, but I got to fold this. Fold. We'll do it this way. That will be easier because that's a shorter. We'll start that way. Okay, I'm going to put this down. So this is the width. So, um, for those of you who haven't done this before, you make your knot and um, just come in between the folds. So you're kind of hiding the knot, you know, a little bit. Your stitches, you're not going to hide. Whoops, I'm sorry. And start towards the edge. So now if you want to put a second row in, you can. Now, starting towards the edge is typical in hemming. Uh, you're always trying to be really close to the edge. But um, I'm going to do sashiko stitching. Now, this little corner piece, what I did was I did a little back stitch just to kind of make it nice and tight. And then I came up and I'm starting my sashiko stitching. Now, the sashiko stitching is visible. You you don't want to try to hide your stitches at this point because the whole piece is about a visible stitch. It would, the whole piece is um, based on an ancient method of sewing. So um, way back in England, they would sometimes uh, do a ladder stitch, like hide it. Uh, an, a few centuries ago, but typically the stitches were uh, visible in the ancient uh, textile arts. 
And um, later on, they got a little more strategic. But yes, so this is how we do it. And we just, we just do this straight around. So um, I'm going to do this first row with you, or this first, so you can see. Now, if you run out of thread, you just simply uh, stop where you are, and then you start that very same way I just showed you, right underneath. So the knot is secure. That's why you're starting underneath, in between your um, patches and your hem. And um, so it's a little thicker because we're going through a number of layers at this point right now. And um, because we folded it, we folded the backing. But this will get you, this will show you very clearly how it's done. And you have two choices. You have a couple choices. You always have choices, right? But when you get, when I think of it like this, when you get to the top, you can either, well, we'll go to the top here. So we go to the top and you notice I'm stopping after a few stitches and I'm kind of making it nice and snug. I want to be mindful that I'm securing my stitches. So now here we're at the top. So I, I go, I'm just going to tell you, I secure this just like we did here. I started the, at the bottom and go straight up and I do the same here. Um, and the, and I'll show you how, how I start the next row. I go straight, straight up here because I want to secure my whole row, my hem here. I am actually uh, using a sashiko needle and it is, um, it, I will tell you, very sharp. So I'm being very careful because I already got myself a few times today. So now what I do here is I, I make a knot just a little bit above, a little bit above here. Okay. And then let's see if I can do this this way. And then I'm going to kind of follow this stitch and then go under. I'm going to have it be visible, but then I'm going to go under in uh, between my fabric because of that way. And I'm not, oopsie, I accidentally came up there. I don't want to do that. I want to stay. I want that thread to be secure. I have to turn this because I'm having a hard time uh, with that. I have to turn it like this so I can see. There we go. Now let's see. Yeah, that's good. See, it's not showing on this side. It's not showing on that side. So this is ending. We're ending that, and we want to pull that knot through. Now we're going to give it a nice little tug. You're going to hear it. You know it's now tucked in. It's tucked in here. So now we can clip it. And then we're going to just kind of let it sit in there. So now you cannot see it. And that is how I do that. Now the next row, right, starting over here, I'm simply going to do the same thing and uh, if i get enough thread here and just like i started the other row that's how i'm going to do it and super simple and um whoops i like to put a couple of knots when we're beginning it and some people make their knots differently. 
however you make it. As long as you've got a couple of knots or a nice, um, a nice knot there, uh, that's good. So again, I'm going to stay close to the edge. I'm coming in underneath, under here. And if you want to kind of cross over and you want to play around with your stitches and whatnot, you can do that. So tuck your little tail under and uh, I'm going to turn this towards me. And then I'm going to start sewing across. And I'm going to go around the entire piece like that. And when I come to the end of this row, I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to go straight across. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. everyone so the table runner is complete and um i love it now you notice sometimes in your fabrics your scrap fabrics you have a theme so there's little bees in here you see them a few different times you see them here in the blue and then they're here so i'm gonna lay this down and you know, I was thinking this could even here, let me show you it on the table. So, so this could even be, you know, they could turn it this way too. Because I didn't plan this, but this comes out almost centered. But it's lovely. So um we'll put it like this. But look, I have a little bee uh teapot I could put right on it. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? So I hope that you had fun making your Kawandi inspired table runner. And I'm going to piece 
some of the fabrics together and I'm not going to cover them completely uh, with Japanese patchwork, i.e. Boro inspired. Instead, what I'm going to do is just maybe select a, a part of it to design. Plus, I want to play around with um, those as fabrics and just kind of um, think about appliques using visible stitching. So um, we'll see where it gets us and I will see you in the next one.